For the first example, a specialty item manufacturer determines that the cost of producing X tables is as the cost function C of X equals 225 plus 2X squared. Suppose that a manufacturer has determined that the price of certain custom meat tables he produces can be determined by the demand function P equals DX equals 117 minus X over 4, where X is the number of tables produced and sold. For part A, we find the total cost of producing 10 items. So what we can do is just replacing X with 10 for the cost function. So we have 225 plus 2 times 10 to the second power, or 225 plus 2 times 100. And the result is 425 as the cost of producing 10 uh, tables. And then part B, we find the total cost of producing 11 items. Same thing that we did in part A, we replace X with the value 11. So 225 plus two times 11 to the second power or 225 plus two times 121. And we get the answer as 467 as this one is 242 added by 225, so we get 467. For part C, we find the cost of producing the 11th item, or we can compute it by subtracting the cost of producing 11 items by the cost of producing 10 items. From part A, we get the cost of producing 10 items as 425, and part B, the cost of producing 11 items as 467. So for part C, we can get it by subtracting 467 by 425, and the answer comes out as 42, as the cost of producing the item number 11. And this one we call the delta C, or the change of the cost if you produce one more. For part D, the estimate for the cost of producing the 11 item, or we use the notation as C prime, or the marginal cost. So this one as the marginal cost, or the cost if you produce one more item after 10 items already produced. So before we do the computation, we're gonna find out what is the derivative of the C and from the cost function 225 plus 2x squared. So the derivative with respect to x is 0 plus 4 times x or just 4x. And then we are going to evaluate when x equals 10. So then the C prime at 10 equals 4 times 10 or 40. And this is the estimate. the cost of producing the item number 11, where in part C, this is the exact cost of producing the 11th item. In part E, we're gonna find the revenue function. From the problem, we are given the demand function as P or the price in the function as 117 minus x over 4. To find the revenue is from multiplying the item and the price per item. And the price per item here is the demand function that we are provided. So then the revenue function is x multiplied by 117 minus x over 4. Let me check. So this is the price function 117 minus x over 4 and multiply by x. Therefore, the revenue function is 117 multiplied by x minus x squared over 4. In part f, we're going to find the marginal revenue when x equals 16 tables. First of all, we're going to find the derivative of the revenue which is the derivative of 117x minus x squared over four. 
So I'm going to rewrite 117x minus 1 over 4 times x squared to see the coefficient 1 over 4 in the clear way. So the derivative of 117x is 117. Derivative of 1 over 4 times x squared, we use the constant multiple. So the constant multiple 1 over 4 and the derivative of x squared is 2x. Therefore, the, the marginal revenue or the R prime is 117 minus x over 2. And then we're going to compute where x equals 16. So 117 minus 16 over 2 or 117 minus 8. And then the number that we get is 109. This is the additional revenue if you sell additional table after 16 tables already sold. In part G, we're going to find the break even points. Break even point means the point that the revenue equals the cost. For our case, the revenue function is 117x minus x squared over 4. The cost function is 225 plus 2x squared. So we're going to solve for x. To handle this situation, I recommend you to multiply both sides by 4 to clean up the denominator. So 117 multiplied by 4, we get 468x then minus x squared equals 225 multiplied by 4, which is 900, and then plus 8x squared. And we rearrange the term to get 0 equals 9x squared minus 468x minus uh, plus 900, sorry. And this one, we can see 9 as a common factor. So we have 9 multiplied by x squared and 468 divided by 9, we get 52. So minus 52x and then plus 100. So we can do a factoring or use the quadratic formula for this problem. So I'm going to factor it real quick. So x squared minus 52x plus 100. 100 is as 50 multiplied by 2 but the side both negative. So minus 50 x minus 2 multiplied by 9 equals 0. Therefore, we get a break even point at x equals 2 and x equals 50. So for part G, the answer is x equals 2, x equals 50. And the next problem, we're going to Find the marginal profit when x equals 10, x equals 20, and x equals 30. The marginal profit is p prime at x. From the formula to find the profit, the profit is the revenue minus the cost function. So the revenue is 117x minus x squared over 4, and subtracted by the cost function. I'm going to erase this for now. So we're going to get the prep work done. And the cost function is 225 plus 2x squared. Simplify the numbers or combine like terms. Take away the grouping symbol. Distribute the negative side to both terms. Now we get 117x minus, and this is 9 over 4x squared minus 225 as the profit function. So this is a profit. And problem is ask you to find the marginal profit or the P prime. So the P, make sure you write as a capital P. So P prime is a derivative of 117x or 117 minus derivative of 9 over 4x squared going to be 9 over 4 as a constant multiple multiplied by the derivative of x squared, which is 2x, and then the derivative of 225 is 0. Or we can write in the clean version as the p prime x equals 117 minus 9 over 2 times x. So we got the p prime x or the marginal profit for any x since the problem asks you to find the marginal profit 
or five p prime when x equals ten, when x equals twenty, x equals thirty. So we just compute directly by using the p prime formula that we just got. So the p prime at ten equals one hundred seventeen minus nine over two times ten equals seventy two. So that means the change in profit is in a positive way, or you gain a profit if you sell the number 11 of the table. And P prime at 20 equals 117 minus nine over two times 20. And the number comes out as 27. It means you're gonna gain additional profit if you sell the table number 21st. And next one, P prime at 30 equals 117 minus nine over two times 30 which come out as negative 18. It means if you are going to sell table number 30 first or the another table after 30 tables already sold, you are going to lose the profit by $18. And from the picture, as you see the graph of the cost function and the graph of the revenue function, they meet at x equals two and x equals 50. And the cost and the revenue are equal, which is 233 at x equals two or two tables sold. And the cost of the revenue equals 50 to 25 when 25 tables produced or 55 or uh, 50 tables sold. And somewhere in between, you can see the revenue is greater than the cost. So that we have the profit in a positive area here. Less than two, lost greater than 50, lost, 